Hi guys, welcome everyone. My name is Vera and today I'm going to show you how to paint our road, our winter road at night. Now guys, I'm going to be showing you this painting every now and then, but feel free to refer to the one that you can see on a screen here um, at any time. But again, I'll be showing you this one every now and then too. And remember, this is a video tutorial, so if you need to pause it, please do that. Feel free to go at your own pace. This video is designed for you to pause it as many times as needed to give yourself enough time for every step. And then whenever you're ready, you can resume it and continue painting along with me. And guys, also another thing I want to mention up front is this video tutorial is going to remain on our YouTube page pretty much indefinitely. So um, if you can't do this today, that's okay. You can do it any other day. It's going to be right here. It's not going to go anywhere. We don't delete those videos. They stay here pretty much forever. All right, that's pretty much all that I wanted to mention. And again, welcome everyone. My name is Vera. I will be your instructor for today. And this is what we're gonna paint. Now let's quickly go through our supplies to make sure we have everything that we're going to need for today. The first thing you're going to need is a canvas. I have a fairly small canvas. This is eight by 10 inch. That's what I'm gonna be using, but you're welcome to use much, much bigger canvas if you prefer that. Uh, just make sure you adjust the sizes of your brushes according to the size of your canvas. So the brushes that I'm going to be using today is a medium large uh, pointy slash rounded brush. Do you see? This is what it looks like. I'm going to be using medium small square brush. And I'm going to be using a good small detailed brush. So the most important part about this brush is it needs to have a really nice pointy tip. And this is actually quite important brush for this particular painting there are only a couple things we're gonna do with it we're gonna do a moon and stars and that's pretty much it so yeah if you have it great if you don't that's okay all right so small detailed brush with a pointy tip medium or medium small brush of some kind uh, for me medium small square and large to medium large brush again of some kind for me it's pointy one and if you guys go with a larger canvas, you're going to need to grab larger brushes. So basically, you're going to adjust the size of your brushes according to the size of your canvas. So if you go with, let's say, 16 by 20 inch, which is much, much bigger than 8 by 10, you're going to need to grab actual large, actual medium, and actual small. Um, yeah, and just adjust accordingly. It's always good to have a couple different brushes. If you have more than three great you can use all of them um, if you only have two that's okay too you can do this with two brushes so again this is just a suggestion all right I'm gonna put those aside and we're going to need a piece of paper towel and we're going to need water and some paint I will be using primary colors only and this is a student grade acrylic paint what I mean by student grade is that it is um, a bit easier to mix because it's a little bit more liquid. Professional acrylic sometimes tends to be very, very heavy and um, quite thick and student grade acrylic is a little bit easier to work with because it's a little bit more liquid. So grab any acrylic paint and primary colors are yellow, red, blue, plus black and white. For this particular painting, I would suggest that you use a red that is a bit on a pinker side. So do you see? My red has more of a pink magenta-ish undertone. And the reason why is we're going we're gonna to mix a lot of pinky purple colors here. For those pinky purple colors, you need to have either red that's pink or magenta base or actually dark pink and or magenta instead of red. For blue, it doesn't matter at all what blue you use. You can use any blue that you want, but we actually always, always recommend that you use either primary or phthalo because generally those are better for mixing. For this particular painting, again, it's not a big deal if you use any other blue, but primary or phthalo blue is going to give you more vibrant, this greenish yellow right there. And yellow doesn't matter at all, whichever yellow you want to use, plus black and white, of course. If you guys prefer premix colors, you're welcome to use premix colors instead. From premix colors, you're going to use any color that you want to put on this painting. But really, you're going to need 
and this peachy pink color maybe even a little bit of orange a little bit of pink and you can mix this whole beauty from those colors you're gonna need a hot pink or fuchsia color you're gonna need purple you're gonna need yellow you're gonna need like a lime color um, and again any other color that you may think of that you would like to use here you can grab it pre-mix if you prefer that I know a lot of people do because sometimes you can buy them really really nice and vibrant and it saves you hustle off having to mix them but if you're like me and you don't mind mixing you can just paint along with primaries and I'll show you how to mix all of them all right and I think that's pretty much all um, the supplies for us today you could grab a pencil too for optional pre-sketch but really I'm not gonna start with a pre-sketch so I'm not going to be doing that. And what we're going to do here, let me tell you how we're going to work with this. We're going to work from the bottom up here. I'm going to start uh, from this yellowy green colors. So I'm going to work from the bottom up and then I'm going to move on to this lighter section. And then I'm going to bring my darkness from the ends. And it's going to be a bit of overlapping here. Then I'm going to do some splatter. Um, I'm going to add those white lines and my moon and the stars but not right away uh, once my background is done or at least somewhat done I'm gonna move on to the bottom I'm gonna add road and I'm gonna add those trees on the sides and the last thing that we're gonna do is actually moon and the stars and everything white so it's pretty simple in general because there are only a couple techniques it doesn't have 10 different techniques it only has a few different techniques but those techniques are tricky however they get easier and easier with practice so once you do it a couple times it will become easy um yeah and i would say the hardest part of this painting is actually color mixing so if you came with pre uh, mixed colors that will be a half easier for you but also if you want to learn that you should probably mix along with me all right so what are we going to start with is we're going to make are super super vibrant yellow so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my large brush I'll dip it in the water and I'm gonna scoop some white on the side and I'm gonna add some yellow to it you see nice light but still vibrant I'm not making it like a pastel light I'm adding white yes it's it's lighter than um, normally yellow would be but it still is pretty vibrant color and with this I'm gonna go I would say maybe about quarter from the bottom I'm gonna start coloring in there I'm gonna color this bottom part you see I do it in a circular motion but it doesn't really matter you can do it however you want you can actually even use a paper towel for this I'm gonna be blending my color into one another more like a dry brush technique but I know sometimes people prefer to dab that's okay too um, and some people prefer to even paper towel mix your paint, but we will get there. All right, so that's my first color. Once I have that, I'm actually going to add a bit more of it in the very middle here. All right, once I have that, I'm going to start moving on to my um, greener yellows. So to the same mixture, I'm going to add the tiniest, tiniest little smidge of blue. Maybe a little bit more yellow. So do you see it turn into like a very, almost like a neon green. Like a lime green. Super vibrant, uh, really bright color. And how you achieve it, again, it's majority of yellow and it's like a 1% of blue tiny tiny dot if you have too much it's going to be full-on green or it's going to be dull more dull green it's going to be darker green so just the smallest amount of blue and also which blue will which blue you add will determine um, the shade of this color I'm using phthalo and as I told you before phthalo blends beautifully into greens and I'm gonna start blending it right here so I'm gonna go right above my yellow at first and I grabbed quite a bit of paint, not like ginormous amount, a decent amount. And you see, I covered the areas above my yellow first, and I'm gonna start blending it into my yellow. So in the same circular motion, I'm just rubbing it 
without refilling my brush. I'm rubbing it into my yellow. And I'm gonna blend the upper part too. Do you see? It's like you're almost like blending an eyeshadow. <laughs> if you put on makeup, you'll understand what I mean. It's, it's like you're blending your makeup. All right, maybe I'll let a bit of a greener color too. So let's mix a bit more. I'm gonna grab some yellow, maybe a smidge more blue this time. I'll grab just a touch of this. Dab it off in a paper towel to make sure I don't have too much paint. And then somewhere right here, I'm gonna start blending a bit more of the green color. You see, I'm using just so little paint, very, very little. And my brush is almost dry, so it creates a really beautiful, almost like fluffy, cloudy kind of blending. Maybe I'll add another tiniest, tiniest smidge. It's all about using as little paint as possible. All right, I think I'm happy with this amount. And now I'm going to move on to this side, and it's going to be more like if my green is going into, uh, sorry, if my yellow going into greens here, my yellow is going to go into oranges here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my yellow. I'll still mix a little bit of white into it. And this time I'm going to add just a tiny smidge of red, like a very, 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 very small smidge. You see, it turned into a super light orange, which is exactly what I want. Then I'm going to go right here with this. I'm going to add it again above my yellow first. And only after that, I'm going to color in a section here. And after that, make sure you pretty much run out of paint on your brush. If you still have some paint, you can dab it off on a paper towel. But by now, you probably will have next to no paint on your brush. And you can start rubbing it into your yellow. So basically, you overlap your existing colors with just the tiniest smidge of this color. So you bring it from here and smudging it onto your yellow. Again, it's very similar. If you ever put on makeup and you had to blend a shadow or a blush, this is very, very similar to that technique. And now we're gonna continue going up here with more orangey and coral and pinky colors. So to the same color, I'm gonna add a bit more white and I'm gonna add a bit more red to create more like a coral orangey color so do you see it's not I am using just such a little bit of color that I'm not drastically changing the color I'm changing but not dramatically and I'm gonna go right here now I'm gonna color in the section here so again I'm starting with a brush full ish again not a huge amount of paint on it but not a minimal either and I color in a section. And then once the section is, co section is colored in, I'm gonna start bringing it down. So if you don't need to, don't refill your brush, you need to have just a tiny touch. You can, however, refill your brush if you completely run out of paint on your brush and you're like, uh oh, I have absolutely nothing left. You can refill your brush, that's not a problem. Just make sure you don't use too, you don't grab too much paint because it's going to be really blobby if you do. This needs to be so little bit of paint. And also here's where I want to mention paper towel. If you're doing this and you're like, I'm following all the instructions, but it's just not working out for you. And you feel like everything is just too blobby, it's just blah and you don't like it and it just doesn't look right. You can use your paper towel instead of your brush. And there are a couple of different ways that you can do it. You can do exclusively paper towel, which means instead of using brush at all, well, exclusively, exclusively blending with paper towel, you're still going to be using your brush for paint, and you're going to blob on your color with a brush, and then you're going to grab your paper towel, and instead of blending how I did with my brush, you're going to 
blend it like this with your paper towel. So you're going to spread it like this using paper towel. That's option number one. Option number two, if you started blending with a brush already and you have blended but it just doesn't look right because maybe you use too much paint and it's just a little too streaky, you can grab a paper towel in addition to that. And again, you can either dab it up or rub it with a paper towel. And why I recommend this option for when you use too much paint because paper towel is going to absorb some of the paint. So it's going to actually remove some of your paint from the canvas. So if that's an issue that you're experiencing that you added a little too much paint on, and this is why your blending is not turning out as nice and light, you might find paper towel helpful. I would say just give it a try. And if it doesn't work, don't do it again. All right, the next one I'm going to move is going to be even pinker. So to the same base, I actually, I'm running out, but I will still use this as a base. I'm going to add more white. I'm going to add more red. And if you if you still had some paint there, you don't have to use any, add anything else. For me, because I was completely out, I still have to add a smidge of yellow. So this time, a tiny smidge. The goal is to have the color that's more pink, but still has that peachy, uh, coral-ish undertone. This is a beautiful color. I'm going to stick with that. I like it. And with this color, I'm going to go right here. I'm going to go pretty much all the way up here. I'm going to add, again, a line that is definitely visible, I guess, more solid paint coverage. And then um, once I have enough, I'm going to dab off the remaining of paint on my brush to make sure I have next to no paint left. And I'm going to start blending it. So I'm going to start blending it down here first. I'm going to blend it down. Ideally, your paint um, here, this layer should be somewhat dry. If they are still wet, um, like if your orange is still wet, that's okay, as long as it's not super wet. It's not very comfortable to do this when your previous color is still super wet. So I would say give it a little bit longer between them. If you find that uh, your previous one is still super wet. I find that in this technique, I kind of, for this particular painting actually, I kind of enjoy having my previous color on a drier side before I move to the next one. But if it's still a little bit wet, that's totally fine. It will work just as well. You just don't want it to be too wet because then it may not work very well, especially because there are some colors that are not very compatible, like pink and green. They're not compatible colors. Um, they don't look good mixing. So green needs to be dry for sure. So I'm just going to gently rub it, and then I'm going to gently rub it towards the sides so I don't have that weird edge. All right, looking good. Okie dokie. And now I'm going to go pinker here. So using the same color as a base, if you have some, you can just add more red to it. And you're going to get a nice hot pink. If you don't have any super easy mix. You can either grab pre hot pink or just grab red and white and mix them up. It doesn't need to have yellow or anything else mixed into it, just red and white. And the first area where I'm going to go is gonna, I'm going to go right here and it's going to be almost like an underlay for the rest of my colors. I'm going to add a bit here. Make sure your green is dry for this. You don't want your green to be wet. So do you see I added some? Now I'm going to dab off my brush on a paper towel. Make sure it's nice and clean. And sorry, nice and dry. It doesn't have to be super clean. And then with just a smidge of paint, like a shadow of paint, like a hint of paint, I'm going to start blending it into my green. Do you see? Super, super lightly. If this is not working for you here, you can even just wash off your brush. Then 
dry it off on a paper towel and then with a, do it with a clean slightly wet brush. And I'm gonna smudge the edge here to you. I'm gonna add a little bit of it right here too. So I'm gonna grab a bit more on my brush and I'm gonna go somewhere around here. All right, I added it. I'm gonna dab off my brush on a paper towel. And again, gently, gently, I'm gonna smudge this and blend it. on both sides. All right, that's looking good. I like it. Now I'm going to move on to my purple. So I'm going to start with more, um, I guess, fairly lighter purple. And I'm going to start with a bit of white, just a little bit. You don't need too much. Then I'm going to add red to make, again, a very hot pink. Or like a vibrant magenta color. And then I'm going to start adding blue little by little until I arrive at the right color. You don't want to add too much blue or equal parts of red and blue because blue will just overtake your red. Okay, that's a beautiful color. I'm going to go with this one and then I will adjust it if needed. Uh oh. All right, so I grab just a touch of it on my brush and I'm going to go right here. And again, I'm going to add a section that I would like pretty solid first. Coloring in that whole white canvas. And then once I added this section, I'm gonna dab off my brush on a paper towel and I'm gonna start gently blending it into nearing nearby colors and here is where you can create any shape that you wanted um, your light section here to have and you need to do this before your purple dries once it dries you're not going to be able to maneuver it so you can't really take too many breaks once you laid a certain color down you have to work pretty fast to be able to blend it on time, in time before it starts drying up. Because once it starts drying up, you're not going to be able to blend it. I'm going to overlap this entire section lightly. Because my pink here was like a backdrop anyway. Super lightly I'm going on to my green here too. Just a touch on the edge. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash off my brush to create a better smoother blending on the bottom because my paint is drying so I need a little bit of wetness to spread it. So I'm going to wash it off. I'm going to dab it on a paper towel to make sure it's pretty much dry with just a touch of wetness left on it. And then with that uh, clean, slightly, slightly wet brush, I'm gonna continue smudging this edge here. And you see it creates much, much smoother and more transparent overlapping and blending. And I'll explain to you why. It's because that extra smidge of water that I have now on my brush 
um, waters down uh oh waters down that paint that I added that is that's drying up but it's still somewhat wet it's not fully dry yet right so all right let me be a little bit more purple here but overall I'm very happy with this see it's nice and cloudy okay now I'm gonna grab a brush full of purple again and I'm gonna go on to the other side I'm gonna go right here I'm gonna start by just coloring this in with my purple And once I have that, I'm going to dab off my brush on paper towel. And again, quickly, quickly, before all of this dries, because it dries fast, I'm going to start blending it and smudging it very, very lightly. It should look like a fog or almost like a powder. And again, if you need to wash off your brush and dab it off on a paper towel, do that and you can continue blending with that. Or if you need to refill your brush with just a tiny touch of paint, you can do that too. So just adjust according to what you're painting and what your brush needs. In my case, I need a bit more purple here, so I'm just going to grab a touch more purple. I'm just going to add it where it needs to go. I'm literally using next to no paint, just so little. All right, this looks really good. Um, we still have another color to go, but we're not going to be adding it right away. What we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of splatter first here. So then we can overlap our last color over the splatter to cover it up a little bit. So I'm going to wash off my brush. Make sure you have most of your background done. You need to like it um, at this point because we're not going to be going back to our colors. We're not going to be going back to yellow. We're not going to be going back to this light green, to pinks, to oranges. We're not going to be going back to any of it. We're just going to be adding the dark color. So, if you're not sure about your background yet, what I would say is let it dry up. So, pause this video, let it dry up for a little bit. And then if you feel like maybe you lost your yellow, maybe you lost this color, you lost that color, or you just want to add a bit more of it, you absolutely can. Just let it dry, make the color that you want to add or the color that you feel like you wish you had more of, and edit wherever you need to. And I would say it's probably going to be a light color, right? So you're going to spread it from the inside out. So start adding it the same way. You're going to add a bit more on the area where you want to have it visible. And then with just a clean, dry brush, you're going to spread it towards the outside or towards the surroundings. So that's pretty much how you do it. 
if you are happy with everything you don't need to do that at all this is just in case um, you feel like you lost a certain color or maybe you accidentally covered up too much of it so this is a troubleshooting I just wanted to let you know how to do that all right so now I'm gonna move on to my splatter and I'm just gonna do it in white so I'm gonna grab again the largest brush I'll scoop a little bit of white on the side and I'll water it down really really well and then do you see this watery paint I'm taking I'm rubbing it into all the bristles of my brush not just on the edge but all the bristles and I'm gonna do a couple different ways splattering I'm gonna do this it's gonna give me a really small but quite spread out splatter as well and I'm gonna aim for this general section You should go pretty much like this but you spread it a little bit towards the edge too I'm not personally I'm not going too far towards the edge but you could I like to have it mostly concentrated here so this is one way I'm gonna splatter and then if you want to add a bit more different splatter you can grab a bit more of the same paint on so water down white and then use another brush and do this I'm going to add just a little bit of that. All right. I am happy with this amount, so I am going to stop. I'm not going to be adding any more white. And now I'm going to let it all dry because, again, I'm going to need to add my darkest color on top. Um, and I can do that until this fully dries. So as that fully is drying, is fully drying, I'm going to move on to my bottom and I'm going to work here. So I'm going to start with those trees on the, actually, let's don't start with trees. We're going to start with grace and the road and the trees, everything together. And I'm going to continue using the same brush for now. Okay. Um, and I'm going to start mixing my color. So. And this time I'm going to use like a mixture of um, yellow and a bit of red and black and white. So it's going to be a, a weird color. Just a heads up. So I'm going to start with my yellow. Let's find a good spot. Let's mix it here. Not a lot of yellow. Then some white and some black. See, I told you it's going to be a weird color. And then just a tiny bit of red. Not a lot, because if you add a lot, it's going to turn into brown. I still want it like grayish green. It's just I want it a little bit warmer. So I think I'm going to start with this color. Uh, no. Let's get it lighter. All right, so I mix some of that with yellow and white. Let's see now. Let's get in there. Let's get a bit more white and yellow. Okay, let's try this one. Yeah, that's better. A bit more white. Okay, that's the one. That's the one. That's the one. And with this color, I'm actually pretty much going to color in this entire thing. Warned you guys, it's a weird color. All right, I'm quite happy with this. This is good. And now I'm going to start adding that uh, darker gray. So you can wash your brush or you can just dab it off on a paper towel to make sure you don't have too much paint on it. But I'm going to grab some white and black and I'm going to make like a medium dark gray. So it shouldn't be the darkest one. 
but definitely on a darker side. So do you see this is about medium dark? And with this color, I'm gonna add a bit right here. Oh yeah, that's a good color. I'll add a bit right here. And then I'm gonna add a bit on the other side. Great. And let's make more of it. I didn't make enough. Now I'm going to add a bit of those wavy lines. I'm going to make them. So don't use too much paint here either. I'm going to make them out of brush strokes. Coming from the edge in. So they need to be bigger and wider and more visible where they start and then they need to be getting smaller, smaller, smaller as they go further into the distance because everything that's closer to us it's always looks always bigger and everything that's further looks always smaller. If you need to switch brush to smaller brush, go for it. I'm still okay with the same brush but again, see for yourself. If it needs to be switched, switch it. So you see it overlaps. You can see still your color through in certain areas. That's good. That's what you want. You want to see it in certain areas. All right, that's looking good. And after that, I'm going to move on to a darker gray. So if you still have the same color, you can just add a bit more black. But in my case, I don't have much, so I'm going to mix it from scratch. This time, I'm just going to use lots more black to make it a very dark gray. In this particular painting, I didn't use black at all. I just used the darkest color I used is a dark gray. So this is a dark gray. I didn't use straight black. However, if you want more contrast, you're more than welcome to use straight black instead of dark gray. But in my case, and I'm going to stay true to how I created it originally, I only use dark gray. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to start by adding the super dark gray right here. And right here. And then from there, I'm going to start flicking the lines up. And see for yourself which brush you want to use here. You can use the same brush or if it's easier, you can switch to something like this. So you're going to always flick from the bottom up and you want to have those nice pointy tops. So how you achieve that is you push a little harder where you start and then you slowly let go of your brush to create those. Uh, and notice I make my brush strokes some longer, some shorter to create a variety. So we want the taller ones on the ends and then we want them to gradually get smaller and shorter as we go towards the middle. So that's what we're going to do. And here I'm going to go higher because I would like the side to be, this is going to be a bit taller here. So never go back and forth, always from the top, uh, sorry, from the bottom. All right, I'm happy with this. 
now using the same paint I'm gonna bring a bit more so I'm gonna add a bit more right on the edge here and then I'm gonna bring a bit more from the bottom up right in the middles of those areas that are already added the previous color too. if you if you wanted more you could add more but I think for me personally like this is a good amount I don't think I want to be adding any more I'm kind of happy with this All right, and while I'm still on this, I'm just gonna grab, while it's still wet, I prefer to do this on wet. I'm just gonna grab, I'm not even washing my brush. I'm just making sure I don't have too much paint on it left. I'm gonna grab a tiny smidge of white, and I wanna add, I wanna rub in a little bit of white right here. While it's still somewhat wet, so it blends a little. You see, I'm adding some here, and then I'm going to dab off my brush on a paper towel so it's nice and dry, and then I'm going to smudge it down a little bit. Not on top, I'm going to keep the top a little more contrast. Alright, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side too. I'm still continuing to use with my continue to use my large brush because it has it's a pointy brush right so if I use just the tip it gives me much much smaller brush strokes but if you need to switch a brush a couple times go for it I might even add a bit more white do you see just a couple little dabs great now I'm gonna go on the other side and I'll do the same thing I'll just dry brush a bit of white here And I'm going to dab off my brush on a paper towel and slightly smudge and blend down the bottom part. All right, and now I want to add a bit of grayness here. So I'm going to make fairly light gray. So I'm going to take some white, mix it with my dark gray, just a touch of it. You don't need much of this color. You see it's fairly light. I can't say that it's super light, but it's on a lighter side. And I'm just going to dry brush a smidge of this paint. Um, right here. Over that original color that we added. So over the lighter sections. So it just tones it down. It keeps that underlay of yellowish, greenish color, but it tones it down. It makes it a bit more neutral and a bit grayer. So again, just dry brush it on. Use very little bit of paint on your brush. Make sure it's nice and light.
you know guys I'm looking at it and I feel like this is not high enough so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it a little bit higher here actually I'm gonna make a bit more of this paint because I'm pretty sure I'm almost out let's bring it a little bit higher up Yeah, I like this more now. I'm happier. All right, and our top, or at least my top, is dry at this point. So all this is dry, so I can start blending my darkest color. So there are two options here. You can either do two colors. So you can do dark purple and then black, or you can do just black. It really is up to you. Or you can do just dark brown, uh, dark purple. I think I'm just gonna go with the black but yeah if you want it more um, complex or complicated depending how you look at it you can start with just darker purple and then do black where needed or you can just do one of the two so let me show you what um, straight black looks like so I'm gonna grab just a touch of black on my brush just a little bit My brush was wet, by the way. Not super wet, but it was wet. And now I'm going to dab it off on this paper towel to make sure I don't have too much paint on my brush. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to add this black. So do you see it's quite transparent because it's watery, right? My brush was water, uh, my brush was wet, and I only took a touch of paint. So do you see it's not solid layer. It's more like a transparent layer. And I'm going to add a bit of that. And then you can wash off your brush, dab it off on a paper towel really well, and you can start blending. Okay, I blend it. Now I would like to have this section in a corner here, a bit darker, but I will let it dry and then I'll add a bit more black here once it dries. And while that's drying, I'm going to go on the other side and we'll do the same thing. So I'm going to start um, a dip brush in the water, make sure it has a little bit of water in it. Then I'm going to take just a smidge of black and really rubbed it rub it into my brush so do you see it's a bit transparent right it's not super solid black because my brush has some water on it and i'm gonna do the same thing on the side now so i'm gonna go right in the corner first do you see it goes on quite transparent i'll let it where i want it and I'll dab off my brush on the paper towel and with a dry brush. I'm going to go ahead and smudge it. And then I can grab a bit more black that's solid, not uh, watered down because my brush is drier now, right? And I will add a bit more solid black right here. I'll bring it down and then I'm going to dab off my brush. And I'll go ahead and spray. 
spread it a bit too. All right, and now I can go back, grab a bit more black as well here, and just darken up this corner because I feel like it's still a little too light and I would like it darker. And just darken up that corner. Right, and the colorful part of my background on top is done. Now I still have to add white there, but I'm gonna wait for it to dry. And as that's drying, I can work here because this is drier. And on the same brush, I'm going to grab a smidge of white. But you guys are welcome to use any other brush if you prefer. I, it might actually be easier with a medium or medium small brush here. And I'm just going to dry brush some white very, very lightly. Starting from this end here and spreading towards the front. So from the back towards the front. Very lightly. You should have next to no paint on your brush. As little as possible. You'll add a bit more on this sides here. Alright, so now I'm going to put this brush aside. So I'll wash it off really well and I'm going to put it aside and I'm going to grab my oops, my medium small brush. Dip it in the water. I might need another paper towel because this one doesn't have a clean spot on it. So let's grab another one. Put this one aside. And I'll dip my brush in the water, then I'm going to dry it up a little bit. And I'm going to take just a tiny touch of white. And I'm going to rub it into my brush so I can dry brush. And now using vertical lines, I'm going to add that glowing area here. And refill your brush as needed. You may find that you may need to refill it a couple times. And likely you're going to add vertical lines here super transparent so to make them transparent you're going to need to use only a little bit of paint on your brush that's a but b don't push on your brush just scratch the surface of your canvas with your brush that's how you do this transparency is that um you have to very lightly touch your canvas and of course experiment with the amount of paint see how much you need because we're all using different brands of paint um, I may need to use let's say a little bit less paint because my paint is more transparent and you may need to use a little bit more because it's thicker so just experiment with how much paint you need to achieve that effect start with little and if you feel like oh I can't see it at all increase the amount until you get to the right effect you will know don't do the other way around don't start with blob and try it because if you add too much there is no help for it you will have to literally wash off that brush stroke really fast so always start with a little bit of paint on your brush and then if you feel like no nah, it's not doing it use a little bit more paint and just continue uh, trying with a little bit a li more and more and more paint until you feel like yeah that's the right amount And if your paint is actually super thick, you might find that you will have easier time if you water it down just a little bit to make it a little bit thinner. So do you see a majority of it, the lightest area should be somewhere around the middle part, middle to middle left, somewhere around here. And as it goes to the sides, it gets less and less and less.
All right, and now I'm going to bring a couple vertical lines following here. Again, really lightly dry brush them on to almost highlight that little path. All right, that's good. I'm happy with this. And using the same brush and just a tiny touch of white, I'm going to add more white here. Again, spreading it from the back towards the front. Just another layer of white to lighten up certain areas. Maybe I'll add a bit more here too. I feel like I could use a bit more contrast, so I'll add just a touch. All right, and we'll add second layer here because as it dries up, and that always happens with white, as it dries up, especially when you dry brush, it gets a little bit lighter. Um, and by that, I mean it doesn't get whiter. It gets more transparent, so it doesn't look as contrast as when it you just add it when it's wet. So. I'm just going to add a bit more right in the middle here to still keep that area super, super light and glowing. So I'll add that second layer in just a couple spots. Alrighty, and then I'm going to move to my moon. So for my moon, I'm going to start with my small brush, and you guys can. If you have anything that you can outline to create that perfect circle, you're welcome to use it. If not, we're going to have to freehand it. But again, if you have something like maybe a toonie, because it needs to be fairly large too. It can be too small. Unless you want it smaller, that's fine. And maybe you can use a lid from something, from some jar, from some like um, vitamin water or something, you know. Something, something, something. And then you're gonna grab white mixed with water. So water down white, just a touch. And with that water down white, just a touch, we're gonna sketch our moon somewhere around here. Again, you can sketch it in a different area if you prefer, that's okay. For those who are not into freehand sketching but don't have anything to outline, what you could do, you can wait until this is fully dry and you can go with the pencil. And you can first sketch it with pencil and why it has to be dry for you to sketch with pencil not that you can't do it while it's still wet you can it's just if you sketch it on wet you're not going to be erase it if it doesn't go right the first time you may have a wrong line you may want to redo it if you do it on wet you're not going to be erase it able to erase it so um for you to be able to erase it you need to do it on dry so you can do that too so do you see i'm pretty good at freehanding at least i think so <laughs> This looks good to me and now I'm going to grab a little bit more white and I'm going to start adding a bit of more visible contrast white. So I'm going to add some white 
starting at the most left point of my move. And do you think, do you see, I'm making it a little bit thicker towards the middle too. And I'm going to spread it there too in a second. I'm going to show you how. You see, I did that a bit on the edge. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash off my brush and I'm going to go back to my medium small brush. It's nice and clean and slightly wet. And with this nice and clean and slightly wet brush, I'm going to start smudging this edge towards the middle. And as my brush gets too dirty with paint, I'm going to be dabbing it off on a paper towel. All right, that looks wonderful to me. I am done. I don't think I want to be adding anything else to this moon. I'm happy with how it looks like. And now I'm going to work uh, on my stars a little bit. And there are going to be a couple stars that are... Do you see they have the smudgy base? They're bigger, so we're going to start with those guys. Um, you can have any amount, but you're going to grab your small brush. And just a little bit of white on the tip of your brush and I'm gonna start strategically positioning them so I'm gonna add a dot and then with my finger I'm gonna dab it up and you see it creates like a little transparent smudged circle I guess you see and then I will add two more here They can be different sizes too. There are no particular sizes you have to have. I'm going to position them exactly how I positioned them on my original painting, but you can position them however you want. All right, so there are a couple stars here. And then what I'm going to do is, using the tip of my brush, I'm going to add an actual star here. So I'm going to put a dot, and then flick up, flick down, flick to the left, and flip to the right. There we go. And then I'm going to add the same but really small one right here. This is where you need, this is what you need to have a really good small brush for because if your small brush doesn't have a pointy tip, no matter how good you are at this, not going to be able to do it. You see a small one. And in these two places that I added, I'm just going to add a dot inside. So dot, dot. Great. That's on that side. And here I'm going to add three smudged ones. So I'm going to add one, two, three. And then inside of those, I'm just going to put dots. Great. And now I'm just going to add a couple more dots um, that I intentionally position where I want them. So I'm going to add a few here. And some of them can be bigger, some of them can be smaller. And you make bigger ones by just using a little bit more paint on your brush and pushing a little harder on your brush. And smaller ones by using just the tip of your brush and less paint. And you can position them all the way along here. As many as you want, wherever you want. There are no particular areas where you have to have them. But I will just say this, don't overdo this. Less is more. Actually, let's lighten up the edge of moon. Again, as my white is drying, it kind of looks a little more dull now. So I'm going to lighten up the edge just a touch, and then I will smudge it 
towards the inside. I'm using the same brush for this because I, I just added a tiny smidge of paint. I don't need a bigger brush for this. It's not enough paint to actually use a bigger brush. Maybe I'll add a couple more dots. All right, and after that, we're pretty much done. The only thing that's left, actually the two things that are left here is one is to sign it. So find a good spot, wherever that may be. And you can put your name or your initials or your signature or anything else that you prefer. I'm going to sign mine right here with the white. And then another thing that we need to do is we need to do the edges, or I personally prefer to do the edges. I like the look of finished edge. I don't like that because that's, you know, that's ruining it for me personally, especially I wouldn't hang a painting with that edge on my wall because it just doesn't look good to me. I would either frame it or I'll paint the edge. And it's so easy, right? You just grab black because, especially because this painting has so much black in it already. Um, and black at adds a lot of contrast so I'm just gonna grab black you can use any brush but probably like medium to large is good and I'm just gonna color all my edges with black and that way it's gonna look super finished and complete when I hang it on my wall it's not gonna have that messy edge it just you know gives it more polished look again you don't have to it is a personal preference but I like it. And yeah, guys, if this is your first time painting with us today, well, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a thing or two, something new, something you haven't know, something you didn't know before. If you would like to share your results with us, we love seeing how they turned out. So please do that. Um, if you have a Facebook, you can post it on Facebook. We have a Facebook group. That is specifically dedicated to people sharing their beautiful artworks. I will include a link to that group in description of this video. So just click on a description of the video. Um, you might need to click show more or similar button there. And you will see the link there. So just click on it and it will bring you right where you need to go. If you don't have Facebook, you can always email us if you would love for us to see how it's turned out email us would love to take a look and of course guys if you haven't liked our channel and subscribed yet please do that like this video subscribe it share it with a friend who may enjoy painting this and feel free to check out all the other videos we have on our channel already because we have been doing this for a while so we have a lot of videos and the new ones coming every week so stay tuned and of course guys if you enjoyed painting with me today and you want to say thank you by tipping me you can do that tips are always appreciated because they help us do what we do and continue doing what we do so um, you, there is a link it's a PayPal link in the description of this video just click on it and we'll bring you right where you need to go and just click on an option that says send money, not request money. <laughs> um, yeah, and all tips are greatly appreciated. For those of you who tipped us through the website already, I do appreciate it, guys, and so does my family. So yeah, this is our painting. Yay! Officially done. Well, I hope I'll get to see some of your paintings. Thanks for joining me, guys. Bye, everyone.